ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys of all ages, fans from America to the UK to the Jaguars community worldwide. I'm your host, CT Jags, and theme music presented by PodcastThemes.com, the leader of independent podcast themes. Brought to you by world famous Podbeam. On today's show, first we'll talk about the brand new logo. Then we'll get to Blaine Gabbert, why he may be the right choice, why David wasn't, and Henny never will be. We'll get to Short's outstanding year and Blackman's potential. Talk about who we dropped at number two. A quick glimpse of on the roster and some surprises as well. So sit back, have a cold one, and enjoy the show. Welcome to Teal Time. Teal Time. Teal Time. Teal Time. Radio. Uh, welcome to Teal Time Radio, hosted by C.T. Jax. All right, let's get uh, to it. Now, first up, let's talk about the logo. I want to say this. You know, since 95, we've deserved something better. We deserved something fresh. We've had the same thing for, what, 15 years now? Did it really make sense not to change things? I mean, first off, you've got a new owner. Then, then you've got a new GM, and now you've got a new coach. So why not do something different with the logo? And I'm hearing the people that saying it looks like Thundercats, but let's be real here. Thundercats really, you know, it, it's not even the same color. They ain't no teal and Thundercats. Come on now. You know, not only that. I've seen the Thundercats logo, and that does not look anything alike. But anyway, I absolutely love the salute to the military. I love the fact that, you know, they're adding a patch in. And, uh, you know, the whole color scheme goes great, too. Though I will bleed teal for life, I have to say, and I have to admit, that this is looking better. And I have no doubt in my mind that Shad Khan will do a tremendous job with the uniforms coming out next. And really, it is a logo that like grows on people. I firmly believe when we look back in another couple of years, you will see that the logo is a hundred times better than the original. You know, add to that, you will also see that the huge billboard that will beat out any other that is in the NFL today will bring out so much revenue that Sean Corn will look like an absolute genius. Absolutely. Think of all the different sporting events that will come through here now. Think of the title game, the BCS Bowl. Think of all the extra shows that will show up and all the entertainers. Oh my. Just to think of it, just to believe. You know, stand, we are united. That's what we are. So moving on, let's talk about Blaine Gabbard. I know everybody's like, uh, well, hmm that uh he um stinks right now but looks let's look at the facts here he has not had a line since he started you know he came out of the lockout and he was not able to perform right away so he lost all that time being a rookie being the youngest in the league at that time and he had to learn a new system in a new league that's faster and stronger than anything he's ever faced before. Add to that, he had to learn how to play under center after he was a spread offense, you know, uh, quarterback to begin with. So anyway, here he goes. He's got to play with a bunch of garbage people other than Monroe and a patch job. So every, every week, week in and then week out, he's fighting to not get killed back there because the line, for some reason, the second year is the exact same as the first year, 
or pretty much. And not only that, he's also got to deal with the unsurmountable amount of drops from the receivers. It was absolutely ridiculous that you had over 60 drops in the same year from the same group of receivers. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I know some people are going to talk about uh, David Garrard and say, well, he had basically the uh, same receivers with the exception of uh, Justin Blackman and, uh, you know, Cecil Shorts. But, uh, you know, you're going to say he had the same, you know, receivers. But let's face facts here. David Garrard was built like a tank. Add to that, he had a healthy Maurice Jones-Drew. And the line was built around him. The line was not built around the receivers. It was definitely a run-blocking line. And y you can see now, okay? I mean, David, you know, had the ability to scramble all the time. And what do you think he was doing? He was trying to get out of the way and ma make something happen. And, you know, the defenders had a hard time knocking him down. And he would run because he was built like a tank. Period. But anyway, you know, you look now and you say, well, Blaine is garbage. All right, well, let, let's look at Chad Henning. Yeah, he had that good day game. But other than that good game, what did he do? Matter of fact, he was the only quarterback that I've ever known that got sacked 12 times in one game. Really now. Okay, so he, he did exactly what Mike Malarkey said not to do. And he ended up the starting job. And they just bypassed Blaine. When all Blaine did was follow what Mike told him, and it didn't matter because he, Mike made him look out to be the bad guy. When in reality, Blaine's not soft. He's just running for his life and trying to make plays with nothing to work back there. And it, when he finally, you know, started to click with receivers, he wasn't really given a chance, and then he got injured, and then the realms went over to Chad Henney, but I hope he never plays another down for the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's just my personal belief. Now, am I saying that in the draft, if Geno's available to pass up on him? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying in the second or third round, if there's a quarterback available to pass up on them. I'm just saying, give Blaine a line and let's see what he's got. If he's still garbage or trash, as some people are calling him, that's fine. But if he's not... And you trade him, and he goes on a team with a decent line, and ends up somebody, let's say, uh, I don't know, Brett Favre, who was traded after, you know, being drafted by Atlanta and doing nothing, and then went to Green Bay, and we all know how that turned out. He's now a Hall of Famer. Am I saying Blaine will one day be a Hall of Famer? No. What I am saying is give the dude a chance. He deserves it. You know, his contract's not up. He's not expensive, and, you know, if we're not drafting Geno second or a quarterback that can beat him out of the helm, which I don't see any of the rookies doing other than possibly Geno because uh, the – what was I going to say here? The way, you know, Geno's ready for the pro, you know, style where Blaine was, uh, you know, in the spread. You know, another thing. If you're not going to do that, why not tailor it to Blaine? Why, don't, why not try a spread offense? It's not going to hurt to try. It's not going to hurt to actually, you know, do something different. And I believe that Jed will put, you know, the best possible, you know, sequence together as far as, you know, formations and as far as making plays for Blaine to succeed if Blaine is the quarterback of the future. Now, if he's not, well, that's another thing, you know. Um, if he's not and they trade him and, you know, he ends up with a great career, that's wonderful. But at that point, I'm no longer really going to care about Blaine because he's not a Jag. People can call me a homer all they like, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I bleed teal. And that's, you know, why I watch the NFL. I will catch a game here and there, but, you know, I really didn't care for the playoffs that much. Watched a little of the Super Bowl, but, eh, you know. But anyway, on to the next subject. All right, let's talk about Cecil Shorts. What a fantastic beginning of a career he's had. Now, I will say that he looked like a 
deer lost in the headlights back when they had them as a kick return. And, you know, a punt returner. But since they moved him to the receiver role, wow. I never thought a Division II star would turn into an NFL star like that. I didn't predict him to be anything remotely close to looking to like what Garcon is. Let alone somebody, you know, a Hall of Famer like uh, Jerry Rice. But what he's proven, regardless of the concussions, which happened, which I don't understand out of, you know, the last few years, these concussions are coming all the time, all of a sudden. There's got to be something to do with strength and uh, conditioning all around in the NFL, or maybe just the way the helmets are structured or something. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is he is a dynamite wide receiver. I actually put him ahead of Justin Blackman, though I believe the potential Justin Blackman will end up a pro bowl in no time at all. But for a guy, you know, that went from division two to the NFL, that is a huge let me say it again, a huge difference. And still almost gets a thousand yards with, you know, hardly any line. He's basically had to make up all this yardage himself. Him and Blackman. They both deserve a round of applause. But anyway, all right, let's move on here. Who do I think the Jags will draft at number two? Honestly, I think that we will go and we will draft no one at two because I firmly don't believe that Geno will be around. And if he is, that the value to grab Geno with the only quarterback worth anything in this draft, in my opinion, as far as top 10 potential, um, you know, with nothing else there, I see great trade value for him. Now, am I saying to trade for him? No. If the Jags believe Geno could be the next great quarterback, they need to take him, regardless of the value. However, if they don't believe that, then they need to get as many picks as they can and build something. Because this roster has so many holes on it, it's looking like a Swiss cheese factory. It is absolutely ridiculous. We definitely need another tackle. Meester isn't bad, but he is older. You know, um, as far as the guard, you know, I could say Rackley will develop into something great, but the reality of it, he's already been injured and he's really unknown. And on the other side, you know, does a good job, but really is just getting older and it's it's time to move on. That's just... I mean, he's on the Jags board and everything, and that's wonderful, but really, uh, he, you know, at this point, uh, as much as people will hate on me, you know, he really, I don't, I don't know. He really needs to be replaced. Um, other than that, let's look at what else we can see here. The backup running game. If Maurice goes down yet again, Oh, my. I mean, Owens, you know, really, you know, turned it on and everything. But if you take Owens out of special teams and you make him the full-time running back, well, then your special teams suffer. And really, do I see him as a number one receiver to, I mean, yeah, receiver. <laughs> do I see him as a number one running back uh, to replace Maurice Jones-Drew? Which, honestly, the new uh, running scheme will be a lot of receiving. So, uh, as well as um, being the running back. And I still don't see Owens being anywhere close to Jones Drew. Now, is he a good tandem? Yeah, but once again, you take him out of special teams with the special teams looking so bad lately that... Uh, I don't know. I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. 
Uh, I would look elsewhere, free agency, or take one of the younger guys and put them in the back until we can draft somebody. Um, I don't know. Or use him as, a, you know, a, a running back here and there, but I really wouldn't take him out of special teams. I mean, you got rid of the other great special teams ace, and the only one you have back there really is Owens. That's really it. Uh, now, as far as the fullback position, let's look at here. Greg Jones, heck of a blocker. However, outside of blocking and with the new NFL and it being a quarterback game, as Jettis said, I don't know if we still have, you know, much use for him when his contract expires. I just don't know. I really just don't see. Uh, I do know as far as tight ends, though, if Mercedes does not pick it up and does not go back to the way he was, all the blocking he does in the world won't matter if we if we find a receiving tight end because he's just going to be brought to the back. I don't care, you know, his martial arts background. It is what it is. I would at this point with the roster so bad, I would even think about trading him. Not saying that that would be the best idea, but at the same time. He's not getting any younger, and he hasn't really produced that well. But then again, it could be the scheme. It could be he hasn't had time due to the line that just is not there. Now, as far as the defensive pass rushers, you know, I would definitely look in the draft to, you know, grab one or at least free agency. I would look at the guy from Detroit. He's, you know, really good at what he does you know, to uh, be a tandem with Babin because I just don't see Lane doing much. And Branch, uh, he's still young. I mean, it's just going to take time. And I know, you know, you know, we do have Mincy. Mincy does do a, you know, a heck of a job sometimes. And then other times he just disappears. I don't know why he disappears. Maybe it's due to the fact that the defensive tackles just ain't getting the job done. Tyson is not worth number 10. He hasn't produced like a number 10. He's not even close. He's been injured a lot. I mean, you, you name it. I mean, as far as defensive tackles, that's an area of need as well. I believe as far as cornerbacks, at this point, if there's nothing else out there, you have to resign Cox. You have to say that Derek Cox, when he played well, I mean, when he was playing, did a phenomenal job. However, how long can he remain healthy? And that was the thing with Gene Smith. It wasn't that he had all bad picks. It's just the majority of them just had durability issues. I mean, that was, you know, his biggest downfall. And other than Tyson being picked at 10, which makes no sense in my eyes because he just hasn't produced anywhere near. Okay, um... Other than that, you would definitely pick somebody up in free agency because I don't see another corner other than Cox, especially if Mathis isn't returned, isn't uh, retained here, which I don't see that happening, uh, really contributing that much to be a starter. I would look in free agency if nothing was there in free agency, possibly a trade or possibly the draft. Um, from then, you got the safeties. Right now, I say with a week, let me say this again, a weak safety class in the draft, I would say that our, you know, safeties are fine. I think both Lowry, who's a stud in my eyes, and Landry, who's also a stud in my eyes, are a heck of a safety tandem. I think as far as the linebackers, I think Hall is phenomenal. I think Smith should definitely be retained, no doubt about it in my eyes. He should be a pearl bowler. He makes the defense look so much better when he's on the field, period. You know, he had that accident, I mean, that injury. But, um, you know, outside of that, he's been phenomenal. I mean, yeah, he disappears at, in games, but you have to realize that the reason that the team looked top five in defense one year and then looked like absolute crap in the next is because three and outs. I'm sorry. You got a bunch of three and outs over and over again and the defense gets worn out. That's just how it works 
that's just what happens. Um, other than that, I would say we definitely need to uh, draft or free agency get somebody else to play, you know, the weak side linebacker because we just don't have much there. I just don't see it. In other, in other news, I'm seeing that the Jets are interested in a quarterback trying to make a return in Jamarcus Russell. Oh, the dude is what? 300 pounds? I don't know of another quarterback that is anywhere remotely close, and I don't really see him as far as, let's say, I don't know. Staying in shape, uh, really trying. Now, if he goes down to 260, 250 pounds, I would say, you know, give him a shot. I mean, because let's, let's face it here. As far as the Jets, their quarterback situation is really a mess. Right now, we're looking at, uh, I don't know, Sanchez is like night and day sometimes. Sometimes he's really on. But most times, he has just been really 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 bad I'm sorry to say it but it's true I mean other than that what do they have they have Greg McElroy which eh, I guess he did all right you know for the limited time he's had and everything but they really would have to go with another quarterback because I mean I guess Jamarcus Russell you know if he does trim down would be a would would have a tenth of a shot at starting. I highly doubt you know he could come close to Sanchez as far as production or even uh, leading the team. And I think it's just the fact that he has no money that you know is the reason why he even wants to come back to begin with. I just don't know mentally where his head has been at. Uh, you know he was a top quarterback. You know, coming into the draft and then just busted big time. Epic bust. But uh, since the Jets don't have much else there, you know, if they want to take a shot at him, they should. Now, as far as, oh, I may be missing somebody. Oh, yeah, I am. But I don't see any scenario, even if he's released, for me to worry about it. So, anyway, I'm going to end the show right now I know it was short and everything but this is still just a rough draft phase uh, I'm gonna go more in detail with different things and look at everything and you know as time goes on produce a better show but right now this is unedited that's why there's mistakes here and I just wanted to give a shot to you know show my potential down the road and everybody been waiting and wondering, they're like, CG Jags, are you ever going to come out with this podcast? You keep on saying you're going to do it, and then you never did. You are like that boy that cries wolf. Well, I'm not really crying. I just had a lot of things going on at one time. And, you know, my ultimate goal is I'd love to be out, you know, in Jacksonville, and I'd love to have the inside scoop. But I think BCC does a heck of a job as far as that, as well as Black and Teal. And as well as, you know, several other news sites and being informative. But I will try to get up to date as possible as I can. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short show. Um, and hope you stay tuned. CT Jags out. Have a good evening. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Please stay tuned for my future shows. I'm going to talk about the head coach and the GM and the owner and everything that's fun in Jacksonville. All right. Take care.